Welcome to lecture 13 in our series on the trivium, that is the first three of the classical liberal arts, grammar, rhetoric, and logic. Today we're continuing our discussion of what are called immediate inferences. So this is deriving knowledge from knowledge we already have um, without needing to observe anything further or to build an actual argument for it. Uh, today we'll be looking at the second uh, kind of operation that we can perform here um, called uh, conversion. Uh, so again, this is a, an immediate kind of inference, something that we can know without having to do any further thinking. We can just perform this operation and derive uh, mechanically, as it were, um, uh, further propositions, in this case further true propositions, from what we already know. All three of these things are, again, kinds of immediate inferences. There's no middle term. Um, in, in this case, and in all of these cases, we start from one categorical proposition, just like we did with opposites, and we derive from it another categorical proposition. So this time we're not using the square of opposites from Aristotle. Uh, we're just using the rules of logic that any proposition um, can be uh, manipulated, can be worked upon um, to yield further true knowledge. What does it imply? That's the question. If the first proposition is true, in this case of conversion, then the one we get from it, the second proposition, is also going to be true. Right? Now, conversion is called conversion because what you're doing is interchanging the subject and the predicate. Right? So Socrates is mortal. Um, uh, well, I couldn't come up quickly with <laughs> what the opposite of that would be, but we're, uh, what the converted proposition would be. But we're going to look at that um, presently. Um, so the example here that I actually give on the slide is some cars are red implies that some red things are cars. Right? Again, a very simple example, but it's new knowledge. I didn't have it in that form before. Right? It is implied by the proposition some cars are red. You know, but yes, by implication, that means that some red things are cars. But we're going to see that all propositions um, can be converted in this way to get new knowledge. And there are distinct ways to convert A, I, E, and O propositions. That is our four kinds of categorical propositions. So let's uh, take a look at each of those four um, uh, methods. Um, before we do that, Cheat sheet. So here's the summary of the rules for conversion, right? So for A, I, E, and O propositions, we're, this is where we're going. Spoiler, right? This is the conclusion. But what I want to do is walk through each and just explain a bit why this rule is the case, right? Let's take a look, starting with A propositions. All right. So all New Yorkers are Americans happens to be true, um, given, you know, all things being equal, we can say this is a true proposition. Um, the goal here is to interchange the subject and the predicate. In this case, New Yorkers is the subject and Americans is the predicate to get a new valid proposition. So um, when you're converting a proposition, you don't change its quality. So if it's affirmative, it stays affirmative. If it's negative, it stays negative. All you're doing is swapping the subject and the predicate. The quality stays the same. Uh, so you might think, just swap it, right? So all New Yorkers are Americans. Well, convert it to all Americans are New Yorkers. Uh, but then you think about it, you say, well, that's not true, right? Um, so why is it false? Um, and it is false uh, for reasons relating to its quantity, that is the quantity of the terms, the subject term New Yorkers and the predicate term Americans. Um, there's kind of a tricky thing in this case. So the proposition is about all New Yorkers, clearly, and you have the word all right there explicitly in the proposition. We know we're talking about all of them, right? But is it actually about all Americans? The answer is no, right? This proposition, all New Yorkers are Americans, only concerns the subset of all Americans who are New Yorkers. Therefore, implicitly, even though the word is not there, um, it concerns some Americans. All New Yorkers are, parentheses, some, by implication, 
Americans, right? So these New Yorkers um, have two traits. They are New Yorkers and they are Americans. And when we refer to Americans, we're only talking about that subset of Americans who are also New Yorkers. So the valid converse is not all Americans are New Yorkers. Like if you just swap it out, you look at the quantity, right? And you end up with some Americans are New Yorkers. And this yields our hard and fast rule. All S is P, an A proposition, validly converts to some P is S. So you always make the quantity of the predicate particular when you swap it with the subject. Let's look at I propositions. So these are particular affirmative propositions. As in the case, some New Yorkers are friendly. This is the easy one. Good. Um, Hauser writes the following. Some New Yorkers are friendly, identifies some New Yorkers with, again, implicitly, some friendly people, but only with, again, some of the friendly people, since there are many more friendly people than there are New Yorkers. He also points out every affirmative categorical proposition has a predicate that is particular in quantity. So some P is S, in a way very similar to the first case, or I guess identical, um, converts to, validly, some P is S. So again, we switch the subject and the predicate terms, and we um, maintain here the uh, particular quantity, or the word some, uh, when we do so. Now we're on to universal negative propositions, as in the case um, Goodness, do I have an example? Huh, well, let's say uh, no cars are red. Hmm, that's our favorite example, right? Um, what does a negative proposition actually do? I guess I have it on the next slide. A negative proposition is taking apart or distinguishing or dividing off or separating, four options, the subject from the predicate. It's saying no, right? This is not related to that. Um, so that's the distinguishing function of a negative statement. So we can note that the predicate of such a negative proposition must be universal in quantity. Uh, and that's because the subject is being separated not just from a part of that uh, predicate, but from all of it. You're separating the two uh, entirely. Aha, good, our example. No New Yorker is a Texan. Okay, so we're saying all things being equal, certainly I understand a person could move to New York from Texas and still kind of identify as a Texan and all of those things need to be considered. But we're taking the example here um, in a kind of straightforward way. No New Yorker is a Texan. Um, here, the subject, New Yorkers, is universal. No New Yorker. We're referring to every New Yorker in this case. Um, but also the predicate, Texans, is universal. Um, so we are talking about all Texans. Uh, the valid converse, therefore, is no Texan is a New Yorker. If it is true that no New Yorker is a Texan, then it follows that no Texan is a New Yorker. I don't have to play any games with the quantity here, as we did in the case of A propositions. It simply converts no S is P into no P is S. So th this is a simple one in that you simply swap the two um, and you get a valid uh, converse of the original proposition. And finally, we have O propositions. Um, let's take the example, some New Yorkers are not friendly. And this is the example Hauser provides. Uh, this is a negative statement, a particular negative categorical proposition. Uh, and so it needs to remain negative, right? Because conversion is never changing the quality, that is the affirmative or negative character of a proposition. Now, it looks like the converse of this might be some friendly people are not New Yorkers, right? And that would follow, that looks like, <laughs> it happens to be a true statement. Um, but this true statement does not actually follow from the premise. It's not a validly converted proposition. Um, because we actually don't know anything about non-New Yorkers, right? The, the proposition, some New Yorkers are not friendly, actually tells me nothing about friendly people, right? Which is the subject of this potential converted proposition. Some friendly people are not New Yorkers. Well, I don't know anything about those people. I can't derive something validly from the original proposition just on the basis of what that proposition says. I need more information to do that. I would need more information.
So um, the conclusion here at the bottom, by the way, we're getting to this, is you can't convert an O proposition. Uh, but let's take a look at a little more of the detail. Remember, the predicate of a negative proposition is always universal. So here, Hauser walks us through it. In some New Yorkers are not friendly, the subject, some New Yorkers, is particular, but the predicate, friendly people, is universal. That's because in a, univer in a negative proposition, the predicate is always universal. And that's why some friendly people are not New Yorkers is an invalid inference from the initial proposition. So I'm starting with, implicitly, all friendly people as a negative proposition. The predicate, friendly people, has to be universal, right? But when I try to switch it around, I end up with some friendly people are not New Yorkers. Um, and so, therefore, some S is not P uh, cannot be converted validly. Sorry doesn't work in this case. Is that it? Just our summary, friends. There are our four operations, A, I, E, O, rules on the slide. Um, this is a useful skill. Not so much because you're actually going to be sitting around converting propositions in your everyday life, but when you come across anything you read online and uh, news articles, anywhere else, if you're able to figure out what actual claim is being made, what is the logical content of an, the argument an author is making or of a certain proposition she's making, you're able to draw conclusions, um, implications of that statement using these operations. Next time, we'll be looking at our last um, kind of immediate inference, which is obversion.